Welcome to Gethsemane Lutheran Church for our Sunday morning worship service. Our mission is to be engaged by God in a living faith at home, at church, and in the world. And we hope that through these services, we help you to be part of that mission. We encourage you to connect with us through our website at glconline.org and let us know how we can help you on your journey. Now, let us worship together. Welcome to Gethsemane's online worship. We pray that wherever you are or whenever you are watching this, God engages you in a living faith through this service. We miss seeing you, and we know that you miss seeing your, church, your fellow church members as well. And to help with this, for the month of May, we're inviting people to share in the leadership of our worship services by recording a, a small prayer or something from their own homes or their communities so that you can see them. Today we have various households that will be reading a portion of our prayer of the day from their own homes. If you're interested or willing to take part in future weeks, we invite you to let us know. We're presenting a new composition in this worship called Shelter Me, a prayer or song in the time of COVID-19 pandemic written by Father Michael Jonkis who's an artist in residence at St. Thomas University. You may know Father Jonkis as the composer of the beloved hymn On Eagle's Wings. He wrote this new piece recently to bring comfort and peace to all, and we hope that it has the same effect on you. Now, while we still cannot gather in person to share God's grace personally, we know that God is showing up in your own lives. Therefore, we've continued our Signs of Grace campaign and invite you to share with us ways that you see signs of grace in your community. Perhaps a photo or a greeting from a neighbor or friend. Email these to us or use the hashtag GLC Signs of Grace on your own social media feeds. Each week we'll share some of the photos that you submit your own witnesses of grace as part of our own worship. Now with the extension of our stay-at-home order through May 18th, we want you to know that of a special worship opportunity. On Sunday, May 17th, in addition to our pre-recorded normal service, we'll be hosting another drive-in worship like we did on Easter. This service will be at 9.30 and people will again stay in their cars. Watch for more information that will be mailed out this week regarding that service. For this online worship, we have produced a worship aid, so that if you have printed that off, we invite you to take that out at this time as we begin our service with our opening hymn, Shelter Me. Shepherd and sheep my God and I, to fresh green fields you led my steps in days gone by. You gave me rest by quiet springs and filled my 
Loving God, we thank you for your presence with your children through the anxiety of the COVID-19 situation. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. From Psalm 23, verse 4. Thank you for our wise leadership and health authorities that guide us in making good decisions for our communities. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance, Psalm 32, 7. Thank you for doctors, nurses, medical researchers, and technicians, and all those who are working to care for the mm -hmm. sick and develop mm -hmm. treatments for this illness. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Thank you for cleaning staff, caregivers, and volunteers, and all who are working to keep our environment clean and safe. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Thank you for the pastor, neighbors, elders, and friends who are working to care for those who are vulnerable, alone, or afraid. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. Thank you for the peace and comfort that comes from knowing that we are not alone. God, grant us patience as we wait, grant us courage as we serve you and care for one another. Grant us hope as we trust in you for the future. O oh, people, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. Amen.
The gospel this morning is from the 10th chapter of the book of John. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to him. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of our Lord. Siblings in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week, the evening news introduced us to 10-year-old Skylar and her 8-year-old brother, Wyatt. These siblings have taken to baking each afternoon after their online schoolwork is completed. What started out as a search for a little comfort in the lives of these sometimes anxious youngsters has developed into a major operation that shares comfort all through their Plymouth neighborhood. It was the stockpile of cookies, bars, and cupcakes left on the countertop that inspired Wyatt to strap on his inline skates and deliver the homemade baked goods to the people that live near them. In an interview, one neighbor expressed her gratitude for the generosity of these two and admitted that their everyday deliveries brings her something to look forward to and some much needed comfort in these pandemic days. Where are you finding comfort these days? Is it in stories like this one of neighbors sharing resources? Is it in the beautiful signs of spring that are showing up all around us? Or is it in putting on a pair of comfortable pants and sitting on the couch to binge watch yet again another season of your favorite TV show? I know that some of you have found comfort in creating face masks, participating in drive-by birthday parties, in cooking, baking, and crafting. And some of you have found comfort in a small business loan, in virtually connecting with the important yet distant people in your lives, and in the companionship of your furry friends. Even in the midst of images all around us of plastic gloves and IVs, of status updates, of canceled graduations and unattended funerals, posts of protests, confusion and fatigue, there seems to be signs of comfort, signs of grace in our midst. Our scripture passages assigned for today on this Good Shepherd Sunday provide images of comfort and familiarity that can settle our soul and embrace us. Even though few of us have had much firsthand knowledge of sheep and shepherds, the idea of being cared for, nurtured, known, and loved is comforting. And so it is that many people choose the words of the 23rd Psalm that were included in our opening prayers this morning for funerals and other times of emotional wandering. Shepherds and sheep have been regulars in religious art and music for centuries. This imagery feels good and it's familiar. It offers us a sense of comfort. John 10 opens with the image of the shepherd and the sheep. And the first five verses are all about the shepherd and how his voice is familiar and trusted voice for his own sheep. The shepherd makes his distinctive calls and whistles his distinctive tune and his shepherd just know he's the one that they are to trust and to follow. It's all about the shepherd here. 
He's the one who comes in through the front gate. He's the one who leads the sheep out to pasture. He's the one whose voice the sheep trust. There is sweet comfort in knowing that God, the good shepherd, has known us from before we were born and loved us. Not because of our accomplishments, our testimonies of faith, or our ability to memorize and recite scripture or other doctrine, but just for being. When I picture the sheep coming and going, being welcomed and sent, I am grateful for the mutuality and the relationship that God desires to have with God's people. And in this text, we are reminded that God wants what is good for us, a place of pasture that is welcoming, life-giving, and inclusive for the entire flock. It is a comfortable and familiar place, a place of overwhelming abundance that God desires for us right now. The shepherd's voice both claims and calls the sheep in this passage, and sometimes the sheep just need to be in that space, in that space of being comforted, loved, and nurtured. They need to stay in the pen away from the distractions and the threats of the rest of the world and surround themselves in the care and concern of the shepherd. We're like that too. Sometimes, based on the seasons of our lives, all we can handle is knowing that we have a place to belong, a place that is familiar, that we can rest in the knowledge that Jesus Christ claims us and loves us, that we have an identity and a shepherd along life's dusty trails, and the shepherd welcomes us unconditionally. At other times, the shepherd's voice leads us, equipping and sending us to be the voice of the shepherd for other people in need, to be the voice that offers welcome to those on the margins, to be the voice that offers hospitality to the hungry, service to those in need, advocacy for those whose rights have been trampled upon, and justice for those who are mistreated. At any given time, we are welcome to find solace and sustenance in God, and all the while we are being loved into a life of service and community where all the sheep have value and belong. Like the children who are baking their way into their neighbors' hearts, we are called to use our strengths, our gifts, and our resources to serve people in our midst so that they too might experience the comfort and goodness that God desires for God's entire flock. Life is not the same as it was a few months ago, and there's no certainty about when or if we will ever return to what we once experienced as normal. But God is still calling. God is still loving and leading and offering signs of grace. There is comfort in this familiarity. There is also comfort in the message that Jesus gives his followers about the thieves and the bandits that sometimes get in the way of them hearing the voice of the shepherd. There's comfort there because we experience this too. In this metaphor, the thief was something or someone that would attack the flock from the inside and the bandit would attack the flock from the outside. We are all familiar with the voices that attack us from within. Things like doubt, shame, addiction, fear of the unknown, and ego attack us internally. While things like natural disasters and ongoing pandemic, racism, judgment, and hate attack from the outside like the bandits. But thieves and bandits make it difficult to hear the voice of the shepherd and can cause us to question God's voice in our world or cause us to temporarily lose faith. Our good shepherd knew from the very beginning that we would struggle to follow and to listen like all sheep do on occasion. There is comfort in knowing that we are not alone as voices from within and without challenge our faith. Verse 6 says, Jesus used this figure of speech with them 
but they did not understand what he was saying to them. They listened to him, they traveled to him, they heard his stories, they could look into his eyes and touch his skin, and yet they did not understand all there was to know about him. There is comfort in these words because there are days, perhaps more lately, that I simply do not understand the presence of God and the brokenness of systems that contribute to things like a pandemic, poverty, homelessness, injustice, and personal despair. Like you, and apparently like the disciples before us, I would like to have answers and certainty. I would like a happy ending and the ability to hold fast through it all. Yet in, yet in this passage, I find comfort in not knowing. We are not alone here, and yet still we are known and we are loved. As wonderful as it sounds to be comforted, especially in these days of fear, warning, and a lack of certainty about the future, the scriptures are always more than simply comfort. In verse 10, we receive a profound sign of grace. Perhaps it is the most clear description of God's mission in the life and ministry of Jesus. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. Abundant life includes the promise that we are known intimately by our creator who loves us, comforts us, and sends us out. Abundance includes the ability to come and go into the pen as we need rest or to be renewed and sustained for our work in the world. It is not a promise that we are exempt from encounters with thieves and bandits, but it is a promise that we do not face them alone. We are invited to live in this abundant life right now, sharing with all of God's creatures the green pastures of acceptance, welcome, hospitality, and grace. This abundant life is full of goodness and mercy for us, even though we struggle to understand and believe. In good days and in bad days, in darkness and in days of assurance, we are embraced by that which is known and unknown, and we are invited to rest always in the comfort of our Good Shepherd. Amen. God's abundance in Jesus is a sure sign of God's grace. Here are some additional signs of grace that were shared with us throughout the week. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherding God, we thank you for the educational ministries of your church. Enrich the work, enrich the work of teachers, professors, mentors, advisors, and faculty at colleges, seminaries, and learning sites. Creating God, we praise you for those who maintain and operate farm equipment, for those who plant and harvest crops, for local farmers' markets, and for those involved in agriculture of any kind. Strengthen their hands as they feed the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. 
We pray for those who walk through the dark valleys, overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering. Restore hope to those who remain in the depths of depression or despair. Bring mercy and relief to those battling mental illness or addiction, those who grieve, and all who are ill. We remember especially this week, Mia Nelson and Jan Michelle. We pray for each of our individual concerns we lift up to you in the silence of our hearts. Comfort their hearts and ours with your healing presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guiding God, no one should want, be in want. Bid the nations to return to your paths of righteousness and inspire our leaders to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Nurturing God, you desire justice for the hungry. Bless advocacy work food pantries, and feeding our ministries in our congregations. May none of our neighbors lack for basic needs. We pray for our partner congregation in Glacia Concordia, that our connection with them may be strengthened through you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray in your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, O God, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive God's blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Baby.
Go in peace. Be a sign of grace in the world. Thanks be to God.